All right, welcome to the Lightning Talks. My name is Andy, I'm the room proctor for this. Um, this is Mike Malone. Um, he's giving a talk on if you're not using SSH, SSH certificates, you're doing SSH wrong. So Mike, hand it Properly to you. antagonistic. Um, hi, I'm Mike, founder of Small Step. And now this isn't working, but I bet my keyboard does. Nope, it's not working either. Uh, I'm here today to talk about SSH. More specifically, this presentation is about SSH certificates. Certificates have been a part of OpenSSH for 10 years, but most people haven't heard of them. So I'm here to tell you what they are and why you should care. So we'll be following a typical three-act narrative form. In the first act, I'll introduce the monster, SSH operations and security. We'll learn that the real problem isn't SSH in general, but the way most SSH deployments handle authentication using simple public key authentication. In act two, we'll introduce our hero, SSH certificate authentication, then we'll wrap things up with a summary of our findings, some code and resources to learn more. And I gotta do all of that in 10 minutes, so I'm gonna be, be moving really fast, heads up. The URL for these slides is in the footer of every slide. First, let me introduce myself, your narrator. Again, my name is Mike Malone. I'm a software engineer. My happy place is distributed systems architecture. I've made some open source and open standards contributions over the years. These days, I spend most of my time wrangling kids and running my company, Small Step, which provides solutions for securing distributed systems. Anyways, back to our monster. To put it bluntly, typical SSH deployments suck for pretty much everyone involved. SSH user experience is terrible. Operating SSH at scale is a disaster. And SSH encourages bad security practices. Most people probably haven't given SSH enough thought to really even form an opinion about this stuff. So allow me to elaborate by walking through a typical new user experience for SSH. So imagine you've just joined a new company, you've got a brand new laptop, and you're trying to get SSH access. Onboarding starts with some Baroque incantation of SSH keygen, hopefully pulled from a runbook, but more likely cribbed from Stack Overflow. Most users won't actually understand what's going on and are already confused at this point. Either that, or they'll know enough to be dangerous and do something like copy their really secure 4096-bit RSA key that they've been using since college from their old laptop to their new one. So we're already off to a bad start. Next, you have to give your public key to an administrator to approve and distribute. So this process is often pretty ad hoc. Usually it involves manually opening a ticket or sending a message to some administrator. Let's ignore the fact that whatever messaging app you're using here is now critical for SSH security. And we'll go ahead and move on. So in step three, you wait. You've initiated some opaque process that's eventually gonna result in SSH access, but you won't get access immediately. And while you wait, some poor operator is interrupted to perform some mundane and security critical tasks. So for simple public key authentication to work, your public key needs to be in an authorized keys file on every server. Most likely that means someone has to add your key to a manifest in some repo and trigger a deploy. There may be some automation around this process, but it's usually shoestring and bubblegum. And remember that the security of this entire pipeline is absolutely essential to the security of your system. So once that's done, the admin will close your ticket or message you back, notif notify you somehow that you now have SSH access, and finally, you can SSH. And you can keep SSHing using the same credentials forever because user onboarding and offboarding is typically the only time keys are updated. Rekeying requires running back through this whole process again so people don't do it. Removing keys to deprovision de -provision access is also manual. So you have all of these keys sitting around on hard drives for people like your CTO and your VPE who SSH to a machine once a year. And if you forget to deprovision access when you offboard someone, you might have, end up giving some disgruntled former employee access to prod. So all of this is pretty terrible, but our new user experience is not done because when you SSH to a host for the first time, you get this warning on the left. You've probably seen this before. If you're like most people, you've been trained to ignore it by just typing yes. That is a problem because this is a legitimate security threat. The onboarding process we just went through configured hosts with our public key, but we didn't configure our client to know host public keys. So this warning is your OpenSSH client telling you that it couldn't authenticate the server that you're trying to connect to. What you're supposed to do is verify the key fingerprint out of band by asking an administrator or consulting a database or something like that, but no one does that. When you type yes, the connection proceeds without authentication and the public key is permanently added to the known host file on your client. 
So this is called trust on first use or TOFU. It's a bad security practice. It's basically the same as ignoring a certificate warning in your browser, but everyone does it. And God forbid you ever want to rekey a host or reuse a host's name later on a different server. If you do, your clients will freak out because the new public key doesn't match what they expect. This is called host key verification failure. It triggers a much scarier looking error. It's also harder to bypass. So it usually results in a bunch of engineers reaching out to SecOps worried that they've been hacked. So that's our spooky monster. Managing SSH credentials this way is bad for users, it's bad for security, and it's a huge operational time suck. But the real monster here isn't actually SSH, it's simple public key authentication. And the fix is to stop using this authentication mechanism. And certificates are the answer. So a certificate is just a data structure that binds a public key to a name. Certificates are signed by a certificate authority so you can trust them. And certificate authentication eliminates key approval and distribution. So all of the annoying and time consuming stuff that we just discussed. With certificates, hosts and clients don't need prior knowledge of one another's public keys to authenticate. They only need to know the CA's public key. When a client connects to a host, the two peers just exchange certificates. Certificates can easily be reissued on demand as needed. And since hosts and clients both have certificates, they can mutually authenticate and TOFU and host key verification failure goes away. So again, certificate authentication was added in OpenSSH 5.4 10 years ago. It's battle tested, it's used in production by massive operations like Facebook, Uber, and Netflix. And all of the tooling required to use SSH certificates is available today. Configuring OpenSSH to use certificates is stupid easy. On each, on each host, you edit SSHD config specifying the CA public key, the host's private key, and the host's certificate. On each client, you add one line to known hosts specifying the CA public key. And that's it. That's literally all you need to do to start using certificate authentication. You can even use it alongside public key authentication to make transitioning easier. You will also need an SSH certificate authority to get certificates issued to clients and hosts. There are a bunch of existing open source tools you can use for this. SSH keygen can do it. You can generate a root certificate and sign user and host certificates. Bless is Netflix's SSH CA that runs in AWS Lambda and uses IAM. Cashier is Intercom's SSH CA. Uber has PAM USSH that lets you use certificates to authorize pseudo use. And Vault has an SSH secrets engine. Of course, as CEO of Small Step, I'm kind of partial to our, our, our own tools, which are also open source. The Step command line tool makes it easy for users and hosts to get certificates from Step CA, which is an X509 and SSH certificate authority. We have a new release coming soon that will also configure OpenSSH and hosts and clients for you and automatically get a certificate from Step CA when you try to SSH to a host. So this enables what I think is an ideal SSH flow. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. So users just use SSH like normal, typing SSH and a host name. And we hook into the connection process with a proxy command to check if the user already has a certificate in SSH agent. If the user has already logged in and has a certificate, they're connected like normal. If not, a browser tab is opened and a single sign-on flow is initiated with your identity provider. So users log in with a familiar web-based single sign-on flow, which makes it easy to leverage strong MFA and other advanced authentication capabilities your identity provider offers. And adding and removing a user from your canonical identity provider also adds and removes SSH access. Once a user is logged in, a new key pair is generated and they get a certificate from the CA using the assertion issued by a uh, single sign-on. The certificate's added to, to SSH agent and the connection proceeds like normal. So in this setup, your private key and SSH certificate is like a browser cookie. It's an ephemeral credential that never touches disk that authenticates you for one SSH session. There's no magic here. This is all using vanilla OpenSSH with a few lines of configuration. The step tool chain makes it really easy to implement this flow, but you can do it yourself without, this, without our tool chain. We're just filling the last couple gaps to make it super easy. So this all sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not that bad. And the important thing is users don't need to know any of this detail. From their perspective, they're just using single sign-on to SSH. So step also includes a simple utility that configures an open SSH client to use this flow. So when you're on step SSH config, step will automatically grab your CA root certificate and configure your open SSH client to use certificate authentication. <clears throat> So there are a few obstacles to using SSH certificate authentication. Unfortunately, I don't have time to, to go over these. Uh, I'm running out of time, so definitely download the slides for this. 
or, or grab me later and I can answer any questions. You do need to manage a few things differently. Overall though, certificate authentication is a better way to manage SSH access. It eliminates trust on first use. It lets you connect SSH to your existing single sign-on multi-factor auth solution. It makes SSH keys ephemeral, makes rekeying easy, and access expires automatically. So that's it. SSH certificate authentication makes SSH easier to use, easier to operate, and more secure. If you'd like to learn more, we have a blog post with a lot of the same info in it. Check out Step and Step CA on GitHub. Bit of sh shameless self-promotion, if you want an easy button for all of this, we also have a, that also solves access control, user management, and audit logging. We have a SaaS product coming out uh, with, this, with a 30 day free trial, so if anyone wants early access to that, find me later, I can make that happen. Other than that, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I'll be wandering around after this if you have any questions, but I think I'm out of time. <laughs>